Superman 3. This one is directed by Richard Lester, uh, who incidentally did the previous movie. Uh, this one is uh, stars Christopher Reed again, obviously as Superman. This one introduces Richard Pryor as Gus Gorman. Jackie Cooper, again, as uh, Mr. White. Uh, this one introduces uh, Lana, his uh, love interest for this movie, who was played by Annette O'Toole, brilliantly, by the way. Uh, this one also has Robert Vaughn as the uh, the evil uh, CEO known as Ross West Webster. Uh, Margaret Kidder ha makes a very brief cameo as Lois Lane uh, when she says that uh, she has to go on a business trip to Bermuda, which she incidentally falls in the middle of a front page story because of that. But it's done off screen, so which has has nothing to do with the plot whatsoever. Incidentally, this movie uh, cost $39 million to make, and it was released uh, with a box office of $80.2, which is, which is, excuse me, $80.2 million, which is, which is substantially less than what the original box office was for the first two films, so it is a incredible failure. Incidentally, this movie is 125 minutes long. It was released on June 17, 1983. So here we go. Um, Gus Gorman, a chronically unemployed loser, discovers he has a talent for computer programming and gets a job at the metropolis based conglomerate Websco. Gus, dissatisfied with his pay, embezzles from his employer using a technique known as salami slicing, which incidentally was also used in the movie Office Space. <laughs> Which brings Gus to the attention of the CEO, Ross Webster. Webster is intrigued by the computer's uh, potential to aid him in his schemes to rule the world financially. Joined by his sister Vera and his psych nutritionist, Laura Ambrosia, Webster blackmails Gus into helping him. Uh, Clark Kent has convinced his Daily Planet boss, Perry White, to allow him to return to Smallville for his high school reunion. En route of Superman, he extinguishes a fire in a chemical plant containing highly unstable beltic acid that can produce corrosive vapor when superheated. Which, incidentally, uh, becomes important to much later on in the plot, where uh, once that stuff gets, once it gets hot, it will eat through anything. Very important to the plot later on. At the reunion, Clark is reunited with his childhood friend, Lana Lang. Better yet, girlfriend. <laughs> a divorcee with a young son named Ricky, who is harassed by Brad Wilson, her ex-boyfriend. Webster schemes to monopolize the world's coffee crop in Colombia. Uh, infuriated by Colombia's refusal to do business with him, he orders Gus to command a weather satellite known as the, Vul uh, the Vulcan to create a tornado to destroy Colombia's entire coffee crop for the next several years right down to the last bean. Gus traveled to Smallville to use the Wheat King, a subsidiary of Websco that manufactures farm equipment to regroup, reprogram the satellite. Though Gus is successful and, and the Vulcan creates a devastating storm, Webster's scheme is thwarted with Superman flies into the eye of the storm, neutralizing and causing the harvest, and saving the harvest, incidentally. Webster, seeing Superman as a legitimate threat, orders Gorman to use the computer knowledge to create kryptonite. Remembering Lois Lane's Daily Planet interview with Superman, Gus uses Vulcan to locate Krypton's debris in outer space and analyze its components, right down to the last elements. He discovers that one of the elements in the kryptonite is an unknown element, unfortunately but glances at his pack of cigarettes designed to substitute tar instead, thinking no one would notice. Believe me, they did. Lana convinces Superman to appear at Ricky's birthday party, but Lana turns into a town celebration. Gus and Vera disguise the United States Army officers, give Superman the crude kryptonite as a gift. Which, incidentally, the kryptonite that, that, that they gave as a gift was also green, but... Nice try, though. It, was, it appears to have no cause and no symptoms whatsoever. 
Superman is seen biting his nails as he studies the kryptonite. Superman soon becomes selfish, focusing on his lust for Lana, which causes him to delay rescuing a truck driver from his jackknifing rig. Superman begins questioning his self-worth and becomes depressed, angry and causing destructive behavior, uh, committing petty acts of vandalism such as blowing out the Olympian Olympic flame and straightening the Leaning Tower of Pisa, of all things, which the uh, sculptor gets really mad and he uh, curses out Superman and uh, breaks some of his sculptures that he made. <laughs> okay, so... Anyway, uh, Gus, feeling used, gives uh, Webster's crude plans for a supercomputer, and Webster agrees to build, in turn, for Gus, directing all oil tankers to sail the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and remain there until further notice. When the captain of one of the tankers insists on maintaining his course for Metropolis, Webster uses Laura and I to seduce Superman into waylaying the tanker breaching its hull and causing a massive oil spill, which made the oil Valdez's real life spill like a, you know, what can I tell you, a, a very small event. Uh, the, the villains, the villains uh, recamp to the uh, computer's location in Glen Canyon. Superman then goes on a drinking binge, but is overcome by guilt and undergoes a nervous breakdown. And, this, and then we come to that scene uh, that I'm going to go to as, as I recorded uh, because you can't really talk about it or do audio because you have to show the actual clip. So here, here we go. I get.
Okay, uh, so let's see. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, he then, um, as he is restored to his normal cell, Superman repairs the damage his evil counterpart caused. And we hear the Superman music uh, throughout this scene. After defending himself from rockets and an uh, MX missile. Superman confronts Webster, Vera, and Lorelai. Gus's supercomputer, what she calls his baby. <laughs> uh, Gus's supercomputer immediately identifies him as a threat. Attempts to find his weakness. After a being of energy, constricting plastic uh, bubble fails to stop Superman. The computer finally succeeds with a beam of pure fake kryptonite, but it's right down to the last molecule. They finally got it right. Which, you know, Vera says that they finally got it right. So, and, uh, 
So basically, uh, guilt-ridden and horrified by the prospect of going down in history as the man who killed Superman, uh, which uh, Russ gave him the title of that. Uh, Gus destroys the kryptonite ray with a firefighter's axe, whereupon Superman flees to go get the uh, acid from earlier. The, super, uh, the computer becomes self-aware and defends itself against Gus's attempts to destroy it, draining power from the electrical towers. Russ, Ross and Lorelai escape from the control room, but Vera is pulled to the computer and transformed into a cyborg. Which, incidentally, she doesn't recognize her brother. Vera attacks her brother and Lorelai with beings of energy that immobilizes them. Superman returns with a canister of the Beltic Acid from the chemical plant that he saved earlier. Superman places the canister by the supercomputer, which uh, does not resist as it suspects no immediate danger. The intense heat emitted by the supercomputer causes the acid to turn volatile. Destroying it as uh, Superman flies away with Gus, leaving Webster and the cronies to deal with the authorities, which they are subsequently arrested, um, and drops Gus off at a West Virginia coal mine. And they incidentally, uh, uh, they offer him a job, and uh, Gus says, no, it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and take a bus. Uh, you know where the bus station is? And they say, well, about... Nine or ten miles that way. And he says, nine or ten miles. Okay, I think I'll walk. And, uh... So then we come to Superman Returns to Metropolis as Clark. He pays a visit to Lana, who has relocated to the big city and found employment as Perry White's new secretary. Um... Uh, um... Metropolis is, uh... Smallville's newest gift to Metropolis. He is attacked by Brad, who is who has stopped line to Metropolis, only to end up falling into a room service cart. The, the film ends with Superman uh, smiling, as he usually does, smiling at the camera and flying off uh, into the sun, uh, into the sunrise for further adventures, which pretty much is the same ending as Episode Two and uh, the previous movie and the movie before that. So, what can I tell you about Superman 3? Superman 3, you're not going to remember it in T minus one day. Yep. Already forgot. This movie is a utter disappointment. It could have been a lot better. Uh, it was actually written with two or three different script rewrites, and they eventually settled on one. Uh, Originally, there was supposed to be one involving Brainiac, which, which would have been a lot better story than what this one would have been, for sure. I also want to add that uh, that Frank Oz, who incidentally was uh, Yoda from the Star Wars, he was originally going to had a com cameo in the film as a surgeon, but the scene was ultimately deleted, though it was later included in the TV extended version of the film. I think you can find it on, on the DVD as well. Uh, so anyway... Uh, it, it's an utterly disappointment, disappointing film. It's actually it's not as bad as Superman 4, but at least it's not as bad as that one. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, watch some more videos. Hit thumbs up to support the channel. Uh, and leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.